Self-defense training at home with your Joe or walking stick is a very basic, simple way to apply self-defense using a stick by thrusting or snapping it up here, thrusting here, striking through here. One of these basic techniques, I'm gonna show you a couple things I want you to do today to make your skills better using your Joe for self-defense when you're training at home. And then you can go out in the world using a hiking pole or a hiking stick, any type of self-defense stick. Hello, Eric, it's good to see you. I want you to practice two things in this workout today. I'm gonna to keep it super simple and short so you have something to work on for the weekend. The first one is lifting your elbow up like this. As you lift the elbow, the length of the stick, the walking stick, the long part of your Joe is gonna come up and hopefully you're gonna catch him either between the legs or catch him up under the chin for self-defense using your Joe or your walking stick. So the first move, is simply lifting and here's the key you're not pulling with this part of the arm you're pushing with the elbow imagine throwing the elbow into his body that's gonna lift the stick in a very powerful way you're gonna have a very strong position this way good morning Garen it's good to see you so the first technique I want you to practice the stick is in your back hand you're walking down the street you're gonna lift that elbow coming up that puts it up between the legs maybe up under the chin Maybe he's throwing a punch or he's trying to hurt you. You're using this for self-defense. You bring this up and you catch the arm. After you do this motion, I want you to change directions by punching your hand down to the ground. That's gonna put it over top of his head and ideally right in the middle of the skull for self-defense. So the first motion is up with the elbow. And this is very important. Once again, I wanna show you it's an elbow coming up. It's not your forearm lifting it. You could lift the forearm here for a quick, fast strike, but you're gonna be a lot stronger when you push with your elbow. You're using a much larger muscle group than just pulling here. This is just your bicep pushing here. You're engaging the chest, the back, the shoulder, and your forearm and your bicep. Everything comes up and you're a lot stronger. So your first technique is gonna be here, and then I want you to turn your hand down and bring it down over top through the middle of his head. Now, if you don't have a target to practice on, you don't need it. The nice thing about the target is you can work on your distance a little bit, get a little resistance in the bag, but if you don't have it, don't worry about it. Just practice in air, put it in the back hand, do one side, lifting that elbow, see how this becomes perpendicular to the ground and your upper arm is almost parallel. You're lifting here and then you're gonna turn and snap it down over the other side. Now this is a one-handed self-defense technique. It's going to go slow at first, taking your time. Remember we say slow is smooth, smooth is fast. That's because I want you to get the feel for how this is gonna turn in your hand. From here, it becomes mo mostly a wrist motion until it's about here, and then you're gonna drop that upper arm back down so that it comes down with full force using your self-defense walking stick from here, or your martial arts Joe. The Joe is a 54 inch staff. This one is an inch in diameter. It's made out of hickory. It's extremely strong. This is specifically for self-defense. You can see it has these grips, but the grips are also teeth designed to, for self-defense to add a little extra self-defense power. So from here, lifting it up, other hand over, your back hand or the opposite hand is always gonna be up in the protected position. Now, if you like self-defense, you like working with the staff, hello George, it's good to see you. Please give me a thumbs up, lift it in the other hand and turn it down over top. One, two, and again, I want you to go very slow at first, get a feel for the motion, lifting and turning, lifting and turning. Notice that you're turning your shoulders and hips always generate the most power from turning the shoulders and hips. You wanna lift the arm first. Again, the, the forearm is not bending, it's already bent. You're holding it in a natural position that you would, if you were going hike for a hike, or you're walking down the street, you're using a trekking pole, a hiking staff, whatever it is. You wanna fight like Morgan from The Walking Dead. That's using the martial arts Joe. Joe means staff, means a medium-sized staff. So if you say Joe's staff, it's a little redundant. But you get the idea here, turn it over. And I like to practice with the Joe, and then you can carry any other type of 
um, walking stick, any kind of hiking pole. You can do this with trekking poles, and it doesn't have to be exactly the same length. This is 54 inches. This is a traditional length for the Joe, but yours can be longer, can be shorter. You can be taller, you can be not as tall. Get the right size for you. Um, Brandon says, are these heavier or lighter than a cane? Depends on the cane, Brandon. If you're talking about um, like a walking cane, I had one on the wall. Because it's longer, because this is made out of hickory, it's going to be heavier. You can have this made. This is the first link below. Yeah, Greg Garen says going slowly strengthens the wrist and grip. And that's exactly what we want. You want a strong wrist, a strong grip, strong shoulders too. This, uh, because it's made out of hickory, this is oak. Oak's a little bit lighter, so it depends on the material of your cane. You can do this technique with the cane, bring it up here and then down on top. They're very fast. Once you practice slowly, you'll be able to go very quickly. You can have this hickory made in seven eighths inches. If you're not as strong as you used to be, or you're not as, as strong for whatever reason, and you want a lighter option that's still extremely strong and hits hard, have it made in hickory. You can check the first link below. You just tell them exactly what you want. They'll make it for you with grips, without grips, but have it made seven eighths inches. It's gonna be thinner. It's gonna be easier for you to handle, and it's still gonna hit extremely hard. So you're lifting it up and you're turning down. Now the second combination technique I want you to practice, you're going to have one hand on each side of your walking stick or your Joe. From here, oh, uh, Superbot Sakur, thank you for that. He said he loves the training. You're going to put your stick between you and the threat. You want the walking stick or your Joe between you and the threat. And then from here, this hand is going to come over the top. Your back hand is going to lift straight up in the air. From here, the back hand is going to come behind it. So you have one palm up, one palm down. The front palm is down. Now this is gonna be the key to the technique because you wanna keep the stick between you and the threat. Five is not too long for Joe. Five is perfect for the Joe, five feet. From here, you can bring your hand down a little bit. This hand comes up and then comes forward. My, my basic answer for everything, is it too long, is it too short, what's the perfect size for me? The perfect size for you is the perfect, it's what you have. Uh, Sprung Jitsu says, thanks for the video, thanks for being here Sprung Jitsu. Whatever you have is the right size. Now if you wanna be a purist and you wanna say, okay, um, what is the perfect size Joe according to the old texts coming from Okinawa or Japan or whatever, whatever style of Joe you're doing, whether it's Aikido Joe, or, and, and if you ever watch The Walking Dead, if you wanna be a, um, George says he has a bow staff hickory two inch diameter, that's a heavy staff. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, you said hell of a workout, I bet. Um, but it comes to right about where your armpit is. That's about where your Joe would start. And the idea is that you wanna have a little bit of length coming out of the top. When your hand is bent in this position, so you can thrust, so you can bring it up this way, you can bring it here, strike down on top, you move very quickly in self-defense using your Joe or walking stick. However, if it's not exactly 54 inches, if it's taller, if it's five feet, it's a little bit shorter, if it's four and a half feet or whatever, then that's fine. Use what you have. Grab a broom, cut the end off, use an old broomstick or a, um, you have a trekking pole, like a lecky pole, you might have a brazier's, uh, the, the self-defense staffs. Good morning, Doug, I was just thinking about you this morning. Uh, both Dougs, Doug, Bull and Doug Rawlings. Nice to see you. Doug Rawlings said he made his own staff. From here, you put the stick between you and the thread. I want you to take the front hand and put it on the bottom. Bring the back hand, oh, front hand on the top, sorry. Back hand goes on the bottom. You're going to lift the back hand and the front hand has to stay down in front of your body about waist high. Now this is so if you have a short ceiling, you're not gonna be smacking the ceiling. If you do hit the ceiling, it's because you lifted your front hand as you tried to do this technique. Lifting the front hand also exposes all your vital organs and you're gonna fight from behind your stick for self-defense. Using the Joe for self-defense, using the, the walking stick for self-defense, you always wanna keep it between you and the threat. Now, as this front hand goes on the top, the back hand goes in the bottom, you're going to keep the front hand down and the back hand is going to slide 
And I need to adjust the camera. I need some fancy cameraman one day, right? From here, this back hand is gonna be on the bottom, front hands, or front hands on top. Yeah, Garen says four foot uh, rattan also works really well. Rattan's nice and light too, and flexible, strong. This hand closes and doesn't open again. This hand slides so it stays open, not off, but open and relaxed as it comes forward, applying pressure. Applying pressure so that you can break the skull right in the middle for self-defense. Um, Doug asked, do I prefer round or squared off end? I like round, but it doesn't matter. Squared works too. Um, oh, good. Just finished training with the... I missed that last comment. From here, comes over the top. I try to see the comments because it makes me... It makes me more, um, it lets me know what you guys are, are, are learning, what you're, what you're interested in, and how we can work together. So that's why I try to respond. I know some people get annoyed. I respond so much. Hi, Nicholas. It's good to see you. From here, goes over the top, the back hand here, and then the slides forward. Then switch your feet and pull with the back hand, pull it back so that you're back in your starting position. So that's now in front of the body. And again, this front hand is going to come over the top and you can either have your thumb here or you can have your thumb under. It's more of a preference thing from here. This works or this works because you're really going to be gripping the weight of your staff or your walking stick for self-defense using the last three fingers. And that's in the traditional way that you would use a Japanese sword. It's the last three fingers of both hands that do all the work do all the gripping and do all the pulling. And you're actually pulling with the front hand. The front hand will pull in this position. I'm also pushing the back hand sliding forward, but you're still gonna be uh, directing the staff or, or uh, controlling the weight of the staff using the front arm, whichever arm is in front. So from here, we were back in this starting position. I'll face this way so you can see what my hands are doing. This is my front side, front hand comes over the top, back hand goes straight up in the air, let me squat down, and then you're sliding as you're pushing forward. And remember, you wanna keep this down in front of, yeah, Leo asked, can we do it full speed again? Keep this hand down in front of your body as you're coming forward. So from here, pull the back hand out, lift, and strike. Back hand, and you're going to eventually start doing it this way. Make sure that as your hand is coming forward, the staff, see how the staff is directly between you and me, and it's in your middle, it's in your middle line, it's in my middle line. You don't wanna be coming from here. This is a strike coming at an angle. That's a strike, but you don't wanna be inadvertently doing that strike when you're trying to do just a directly vertical strike coming straight down the middle. So from here, you wanna be coming through the middle, pull, lift, push. Pull, lift, push. You can start with your feet just under your body, kind of in a neutral position. And I want you to work up to having the same foot forward as the hand that's going to be on the bottom. Remember, if you keep this hand down here, you're not gonna to have to worry about striping your ceiling or ripping part, big chunks of your ceiling off if you're doing this inside. So from here, right foot, my, my left hand's forward, left foot forward, one, two, try to start to get your hand to go straight up and not, not swinging at this angle, but the back hand coming straight up and down. And this is just a flow drill to help you become more competent with the handling of your self-defense staff or your walking stick for self-defense. And this is just one simple drill. If you have it between you and the threat, you need to be faster, open your hand and thrust going right through. So from here, you can thrust here, then pull it and drop it on top of his head the other way. But the idea is pulling with the back hand. Also, you can push. And when you push, practice turning that palm facing up. Remember, you're holding the last three fingers of the hand when you're using your Joe martial arts staff or your walking stick for self-defense. I don't know if, you, if, if you've seen The Walking Dead and know the character Morgan, 
he has this, this genesis of his character in the movie or the TV series where he meets some guy, I don't know his name, who is an Aikido practitioner and teaches him the Aikido staff for self-defense, which is this. The Aikido staff is, I think they call it a bow, maybe, which is the incorrect term because the bow is the long staff, it's the six foot staff. The Joe is 54 inches usually. Again, the link is below. And if you like this kind of stuff, if you like Morgan from The Walking Dead, give me a thumbs up. But especially if you like training self-defense, then I want you to change this drill so that you're stepping and stepping. Now stepping through with the back foot because when you step in self-defense, when you step in self-defense, your power is accelerated. It's multiplied. It's magnified. So start by just changing feet, whichever foot's forward. But then once you get comfortable, change the foot and step. Slide back and step. Slide back and step. And always pushing with both hands and pulling with the front hand. And as this hand comes down, sliding, putting pressure with this hand against it as we go forward. Uh, Doug says with the right baton, you stri strike with the last 12 inches. Is the Joe the same? Absolutely, Doug. You're, imagine that this is a sword and that's where your blade would be. You would be focusing on the tip. And all of these are really, it's not like, a, it's not like an ax. It's like slicing. So if you imagine a freshly baked loaf of bread and you take your super knife, uh, sharp knife, serrated or not, and you just push on it, you're going to squish the bread. And then it won't taste as good when you put the butter on it. But if you take the knife and you slice the bread and it's a sharp knife, it's going to leave the bread in the same shape. It won't collapse it, right? So this is the same way. You are slicing, so you're making an arc, and that's where your shoulders come in. You're making an arcing motion and not a pushing down, chopping motion. It has to be an arcing motion. And yes, as Doug said, you're just using this tip or this length, the last 12 inches or so, to strike with. We have thrusts, and we have these basic strikes. Once you get good at taking, taking that step and coming forward and coming forward, you can start to change directions, right? So I come here, and then I come here, and then you go this direction, you can go this direction, you can go off at an angle, and later I'll show you a drill where you get all eight angles in there. But this is a good place for us to stop so you can get started training with your Joe staff for self-defense or the walking stick for self-defense. Thank you so much and thanks for all the thumbs up. I'll see you guys in a little bit.